as you worship with us tonight. Luke chapter 2, verse 10. Let's uh, read that verse together. You'll find it in your bulletin right there at the beginning. Luke chapter 2, verse 10. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we are so thankful that we can be here tonight. We're thankful, Lord, for a beautiful day that you've given us. Weather is not an issue tonight. And we're thankful, Lord, that we can come and worship Jesus, the one who has come to be our Savior, our Lord, our Master, Lord of life. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would be present among us tonight, that your word that is read and proclaimed, the songs we sing, that it would all bring praise and honor and glory unto you. Lord Jesus, we love you because you first loved us. And I pray that all that we do here tonight would honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing together. Angels from the realms of glory wing your flight o'er all the earth. He who sang creation story now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the Tonight we light the fifth candle, the Christ candle. The white candle reminds us that Jesus is the spotless Lamb of God, sent to wash away our sins. His birth was for his death, and his death was for our birth. The next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Look, the Lamb of God, who takes away our sins of the world. John 1, 29. Matthew 2. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod, the king, behold, we ha wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born the king of the Jews? For we saw a star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief, chief priests and scribes of people, he acquired of them where the Christ was to be born. <clears throat> they told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, and you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly, and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen, when it rose, went before them, until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way.
What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Who angels greet with anthems sweet while shepherds watch our keeping? So bring him incense, gold, and myrrh, come peasant king to own him. The king of kings salvation brings, let loving hearts enthrone him. This, this is Christ the king, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. Oh, raise, raise a song on high, his mother sings a lullaby. Joy, oh joy, for Christ is born, the babe, the son of Mary. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son. Mary. What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap, on Mary's lap, he is sleeping. This, this is Christ the King. Whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. The babe, the son of Mary. Son of Mary. call on our ushers to worship the Lord with our tithes and offerings this evening. And we're going to continue to sing some Christmas carols together as the offering plates go around. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Give ye heed to what we say, Jesus Christ is born today. Ox and ass before him bow, and he is in the manger now. Christ is born today, Christ is born today. Good Christian friends rejoice, with heart and soul and voice. Now ye hear of endless bliss, 
Jesus Christ was born for this. He has opened heaven's door, and we are blessed forevermore. Christ was born for this. Christ was born for this. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now ye need not hear the grave. Jesus Christ was born to save. Calls you one and calls you all to gain his everlasting hall. Christ was born to save. Christ was born to save. Infant holy, infant lowly, for his bed a cattle stall. Oxen lowing, little knowing, Christ the child is Lord of all. Swiftly winging, angels singing, bells are ringing, tidings bringing, Christ the child is Lord of all. Christ the child is Lord of all. Flocks were sleeping, shepherds keeping, vigil till the morning new. Saw the glory, heard the story, tidings of a gospel true. Thus rejoicing, free from sorrow, praises voicing, greet the morrow. Christ the child was born for you. Christ the child was born for you. Let's stand for this last one. While shepherds watch their flocks by night, all seated on the ground the angel of the lord came down and glory shone around and glory shone around fear not said he for mighty dread had seized their troubled minds. The tidings of great joy I bring to you and all mankind, to you and all mankind. To you in David's town this day is born of David. Savior, who is Christ the Lord, and this shall be the sign, and this shall be the sign. The heavenly babe you there shall find to human view displayed, all meanly wrapped in swine.
walk in darkness deep now see the light of morning the mighty god the prince of peace a child to us is born behold the lamb of god who takes away our sin behold the lamb of god the life and light of man behold the lamb of god who died and rose again behold the lamb of god who comes to take away our sin. <clears throat> Wanders in the wilderness, oh, hear a voice is crying, prepare the way, make straight the path, your king has come to die behold the lamb of god who takes away our sin behold the lamb of god the life of light and man behold the lamb of died and rose again behold the lamb of god who comes to take away our sin son of god son Thank you, Katie and Micah. We don't separate the cradle from the cross, do we? Jesus came to be our Savior, and we rejoice in that tonight. As a pastor, when you come to a Christmas service, you ask yourself the question, what do I say, right? There's only so many texts of Scripture that deal with the birth of Jesus, but it is a message that we need to hear over and over and over again what Jesus Christ has done for us, why he came to this earth. And so this evening we turn to Luke chapter 2. I'm going to read that Christmas account from the Gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. I invite you to stand in reverence to God's word as we read. Now in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus, that a census be taken of the inhabited of the earth. 
This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone was on his way to register for the census, each to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, in order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was with child. And while they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you, for you will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. When the angels had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, Let us go straight to Bethlehem then, and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So they came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. When they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told them about this child. And all who heard it wondered at the things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. The shepherds went back glorifying and praising God for all that they had seen and heard, just as had been told them. Let's pray. Father, these are words that you have given by the inspiration of your Spirit. We believe, O oh God, that your word is truth. I pray that you would sanctify us in that truth. And Lord Jesus, I pray that the words of my mouth tonight, the meditations of our hearts would be pleasing in your sight. For it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Many years ago, a man told me how his father knew he had been born. His father worked at a plant in Duluth. He was working the night shift, and so he went off to work. It was New Year's Eve in the 1940s. Well, while he's working, his wife goes into labor. So what do you do? No cell phones in the 1940s. So she calls the taxi. Taxi takes her to the hospital. And it must have been a very quick labor because the baby was born just after midnight. Well, that's the first baby of the year, right? And so the newspaper caught word of that, and they printed it then just in time for New Year's Day morning paper. And so this man comes home from work, and he comes to the steps of his house, and there was the paper. He picks up the paper and said, hmm, I have a son. That is a true story. Can you imagine discovering that your son was born by reading the paper on New Year's Day morning? Quite a birth announcement, huh? Quite a way to discover that you have a son. There are many different ways that you could announce the birth of a baby today, aren't there? Social media, right? That's probably the number one choice of our young people today. You could send an email. You could send a text. Make a phone call. Anybody know what that's like? 
How about a letter? <laughs> Actually put it in the mail and it, you know, is brought to someone's house. Or in small towns still, there are birth announcements in, in newspapers. None of these methods come close to the glorious way in which Jesus' birth was announced. God sent an angel to some shepherds along with, what would we say, a heavenly praise team. And they announced that birth by saying, glory to God in the highest. This was a special birth. This was the most special birth that has ever taken place in the history of the world. And it came then with a special announcement. Glory to God in the highest. There are three ways in which we see the glory of God in the birth of Jesus. First of all, we see the glory of God's providence. The glory of God's providence. The prophet Micah prophesied that Jesus would be born in the city of Bethlehem. Micah chapter 5, verse 2 says, But as for you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, too little to be among the clans of Judah. From you one will go forth for me to be ruler in Israel. His goings forth are from long ago, from the days of eternity. The eternal Son of God, who has always existed, then took on human flesh, born in a little town called Bethlehem. Now, there was a minor problem here because Joseph and Mary didn't live in Bethlehem. They lived in the little town of, of Nazareth, about 80 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem. Now, I would suggest to you that that's a little bit of a problem when your wife is ready to give birth to a baby soon, right? I don't know how long it took them to journey 80 miles. If they were walking, can you imagine a pregnant woman walking that far? If, they were, if she was riding on some kind of an animal like a camel or something, that had to be quite a journey, quite a trip. Would Joseph be willing to take a chance? I remember when our children were born, and that was before cell phones, okay? So we, didn't, we weren't going to travel anywhere, right? We were sticking close to home, and I remember I would tell my wife, okay, I'm going to be at the office for these hours, and then I'd come home for lunch, and, and then I would be out visiting or something, and I would, I would call and say, okay, I'm, I'm here, anything happening? Oh, no, not yet. What's wrong with that baby? Come on, come on. And so... That's, that's what it was like. We, we, we thought, you know, traveling? Uh-uh. We want to be close to home, close to the hospital. So how was Joseph going to take his wife from Nazareth to Bethlehem? Well, Luke gives us the answer in this uh, question. It was through the decree of Caesar Augustus. That all the world, all the inhabited earth, the census should be taken. And so everyone was on his way to, to the town where mom and dad grew up, the hometown, to register for that census. Now every time we read Luke's account of the Christmas story, we, we hear about this guy, Caesar Augustus. His name is Probably pretty familiar to us, but I don't know that we maybe know that much about him. Maybe some of you do. Uh, Kent Hughes says, Caesar Augustus was the first Caesar to be called Augustus when the Roman Senate voted to give him that title. Augustus means holy or revered. And up to that time, Hughes says, the, the title was reserved exclusively for the gods, the false gods. It was under Augustus' rule that decisive strides were taken toward making the Caesar gods 
In fact, at about the time that Luke was writing these words, some of the Greek cities in Asia Minor adopted Caesar's birthday, September the 23rd, as the first day of the new year, and get this, hailing him as Savior. So this man was a man of great power. His influence was far-reaching, even to the very little town of Nazareth. Now, as you can well imagine, Caesar Augustus had no intention of fulfilling biblical prophecy. (laughs) Absolutely no intention of doing that. But the decree that he made did exactly that. Caesar Augustus was, as one man put it, an unknowing agent of God. He was part of the drama of the Christmas story without even realizing it. There's the providence of God, right? There's the providence of God. This man had no idea that he was fulfilling biblical prophecy with that decree. He was an unknowing agent of God. Matthew Henry puts it this way. He said, God makes use of the projects men have for serving their own purposes, quite beyond their intention to serve his. Or Warren Wearsby puts it this way. He says, Caesar was ruling, but God was in charge. That good? God was in charge. God ordained that this young couple make that journey through the decree of Caesar in fulfillment of prophecy. Now you say, what's the big deal about that? Well, I'll tell you what. I find it to be encouraging because there are times in our lives when we face circumstances that are very difficult. Very trying, very troublesome. And I would guess that this situation probably seemed that way for Joseph and Mary. Traveling from Nazareth to Bethlehem, now? Can't you just hear hear Mary saying that to Joseph? Are you kidding me, Joseph? We really need to go there now? I'm ready to deliver. What a challenging situation that was. One author says it was a miserable journey. Mary was full term, which forced a slow rolling gait as she walked those 80 miles. Perhaps as she was fortunate, she had borrowed an animal to carry her. But whatever their situation, she traveled in the dust and cold of winter bearing the distressing knowledge that she might have her first baby far from home, far from her mother, and far from nearly everyone who cared about her. Then he says, Joseph and Mary appeared to be helpless pawns caught in the movements of secular history, but every move was under the hand of, of God. Their every move was under the hand of God. Isn't that good news? We are not helpless pawns in the world. We are not victims of misfortune. God is in charge. He rules and he overrules to accomplish his purpose. There's the glory of God's providence. God was involved in that event in fulfillment of prophecy. The second thing we notice about God's glory, the glory of God's provision. The glory of God's provision. Much attention is given to the shepherds in the Christmas story. They were the outcasts of society, and they illustrate the fact that God has chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith. And many believe that this is why they were the first ones to hear about the birth of Jesus. 
Not the religious leaders in Jerusalem, but the shepherds out in the fields keeping watch over their flock. But if you think about the reason why Jesus came into the world, it is very fitting that shepherds were the first ones to hear of that birth. Because Jesus is both a shepherd as well as a lamb. Isn't that true? He is both a shepherd and a lamb. In John 11, Jesus said this, I am, what? The good shepherd. The good shepherd does what? He lays down his life for the sheep. John 1.29 says that Jesus is the Lamb of God. Remember John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So both as a shepherd and as a lamb, Jesus came to be our Savior. He is God's provision for our salvation. And that's exactly what the angel told the shepherds, right? Right? They were keeping watch over their flock by night, and here comes this angel. Suddenly stood before them. The glory of the Lord shone around them, and as you can well imagine, they were frightened. They were terribly frightened, our text says. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, there has been born for you what? A Savior. A Savior who is Christ the Lord. What kind of Savior is Jesus? I would suggest to you Jesus is a powerful Savior. <laughs> Because the angel said, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be for who? For all the people. For all the people. Why? Because Jesus came to die on the cross and pay the price for the sins of the world. So you can never say that God doesn't love you. The message of Christmas is good news of great joy. For everyone, everyone that would put their trust in him. But Jesus is also a personal savior, isn't he? The angel went on to say, today in the city of David, there has been born for you. For you. For you. For you. For you. A Savior who is Christ the Lord. Kent Hughes says, It is not enough to hear about Jesus. It is not enough to peek in the manger and say, Oh, how nice. What a lovely scene. It gives me such good feelings. There's some people that approach Christmas like that. Oh, isn't that sweet? Oh, that little baby. Everybody loves a little baby. Oh, how wonderful. Just gives me great feelings. He says, the truth is, even if Christ were born in Bethlehem a thousand times, but not within you, he says, you would be eternally lost. The Christ who was born into the world must be born in you. Religious sentiment, even at Christmas time, without the living Christ, is a yellow brick road to darkness. Jesus came for you. And that's why we speak of the need for a personal relationship with Him. Not just knowing about Him, but knowing Him as your Savior. Having received that gift of salvation that, that Jesus so clearly offers to us. To as many as received him, to them he gave the right to be called the children of God, even to those who believe on his name. 
There was a young girl who used to frequently watch the great artist Steinberg as he painted pictures. And one day as he worked on his masterpiece, Christ on the Cross, she said to him, he must have been a very wicked man to be nailed to a cross like that. And Steinberg said, no, on the contrary, he was a very good man, the very best man that ever lived. He died for others. And this girl paused for a minute and then she asked him the question, did he die for you? Did he die for you? Steinberg at the time was not a believer. He was not a Christian, and, and yet he was painting that picture of Christ and the cross. That, and maybe it, it had never, he had never thought about it. Did Jesus die for me? And that's what God used in, in his life to, to bring Steinberg to Jesus. The thought that, yes, Jesus died for the world, but he died for me. He died for me. And I'm so grateful tonight to say that Jesus died for me. He shed his blood on the cross for me. And that can be your testimony tonight too. As you come to Jesus, to be able to say that Jesus died for me. He paid the price for my sin. I heard uh, Greg Laurie on the radio this week as I was driving, and he told about a, a sermon he had preached somewhere, and as he got to the end of the sermon, he invited people to come to Jesus. And he said, friends, friends, Jesus welcomes you to come to him. Friend. There was a guy that came up after the service. You know what his name was? Friend. And he said, you had to have been talking to me tonight. Because my name is Friend. And that was the night that that man met Jesus. Yeah, Friend. You've paid attention to the songs that we sing at Christmas. You know how they emphasize the need for Jesus to be born in us. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. What's the next phrase? Let every heart prepare him room. Room in your heart tonight for Jesus. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in, be born in us today. Mild he lays his glory by, born that man no more may die, born to raise us from the earth, born to give us second birth, right? Born again. Thou didst leave thy throne and thy kingly crown when thou camest to earth for me. But in Bethlehem's home there was found no room for thy holy nativity. O oh, come to my heart, Lord Jesus, there is room in my heart for thee. I trust that's your testimony tonight. Jesus, there's room in my heart for you. There's room in my heart for you, Lord Jesus. I know I need you. And you died for me. Lord Jesus, there's room in my heart for you. God's provision, right? Glory to God for his provision of a Savior. But then finally, notice thirdly, the glory of God's purpose. The glory of God's purpose. Having heard the announcement of Jesus' birth, the first thing the shepherds did was to go and meet this Jesus. Verse 15, when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, 
Let us go straight to Bethlehem then and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has made known to us. So they came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. Now I find it very interesting that they didn't say, let's go and see if this has happened. As if there was some doubt or some question in their mind. <laughs> they said, let's go and see this thing that has happened. This angel that gave them that message had come from the presence of God. They had come with the word of God. And the shepherds Believed him, right? This, this, this is God's word to us. This is God's message to us. Let, let's go now and meet our Savior. Let's meet this one who has come to save us. And they didn't wait until the next day. This message came at night. They didn't wait until morning. They took off, right? They came in a hurry, and they found Mary and Joseph and Jesus lying in the manger. One man has called this the first Christmas rush. <laughs> they rushed to Jesus. Now, some of you are probably experiencing a Christmas rush, aren't you? Some of you guys, you wait until the last day, right? Better get that present and you're rushing. I was told to go out and get some, some uh, food for the family that's coming home. It was nuts out there. It was, and everything I was, that was on my list was gone. Came home with my tail between my legs and said, Honey, I was not a success today. I couldn't find it. it was, they were rushing all over the place. Have you rushed to Jesus? Have you come to him without delay? Or are you continuing to, to put it off, huh? Some other day. Some other time. Not today. Some other time. And yet God's word is very clear, isn't it? Today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Today, if you hear his voice, what? Don't harden your heart. There are people that are hardening their hearts. They've heard this message over and over again. Many Christmas services, besides other worship services, they come to church and they hear the message and they know they need a Savior, but not today. And if you are one of those who is saying, not today, give me one good reason why not today. I challenge you. There is no good reason to turn away from Jesus today. The Christmas rush to the presence of Jesus. That's what you need. Now, once the shepherds had met Jesus, it became clear to them what their purpose was. Their purpose was to go and proclaim to others that a Savior has been born. Verse 17 says, When they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told them about this child. Now, who would have ever thought that these shepherds would be the first New Testament evangelists? Huh. Isn't that awesome? These guys, the, you know, the outcasts of society, uh, you read about them and they couldn't even... Uh, witness in, 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 a, in a, a court. And yet they became the first New Testament evangelist. <laughs> Announcing the birth of Jesus with great joy. Now, you need to notice 
that there were two responses to this news of the birth of Jesus. The first response was amazement. Verse 18, it says, And all who heard it wondered at the things which were told them by the shepherds. I did a little little study on that word wondered. It's a word that Luke used 17 times in the Gospel of Luke and the book of Acts, the two books that he, he authored. And the word means to wonder, to marvel, to be struck with admiration or astonishment. And what is interesting about how this word is used, and I traced it through uh, Luke's uh, gospel and the book of Acts, it was often used to describe people who were amazed at something that God did, but it didn't really change them. Is that possible? To be amazed, oh, wow, what a miracle, and yet not really being changed? You bet it is. Think of all the miracles that Jesus performed in his earthly ministry. And what do they say? Ah, show us another sign. Show us another sign. Didn't change them. John MacArthur says, from the very beginning... The life and ministry of Jesus caused people to marvel and to be amazed. Unfortunately, then, as now, much of that amazement produced not commitment, but merely curiosity. When the shepherds heard the good news of the Savior's birth, they immediately sought him out. But all that is said of those to whom they witnessed is that they wondered. Then he says, after their initial amazement wore off, most of them probably just went on with their lives as if nothing had happened. In other words, they failed to grasp the significance of Jesus' birth. And I want to ask you tonight, are you one of those who has failed to grasp The significance of Jesus' birth? Are you going to go on with your life? Are you going to walk out the door tonight as if nothing has happened? As if the birth of Jesus means nothing? Notice the contrast then that Luke makes with Mary. Sharp contrast to those who merely wondered about the birth of Jesus. Verse 19 says, but, and here's the contrast, but Mary treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. The words treasured and pondering both describe ongoing action in the Greek text. They emphasize that Mary was impacted by the birth of Jesus in a very deep and enduring way. She may not have understood everything yet. I mean, can you imagine what she had gone through in those months, the announcement that she would give birth to the Messiah? But she grasped the significance in holding that little baby, that that baby that would be named Jesus. But that baby had come for a special purpose. And can't you just picture her pondering and and reminding herself of all the things that had been said to her and, and then holding in her arms the Savior of the world and then meeting Simeon and Anna, hearing Simeon holding Jesus in his arms and And saying, now I can die in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation. All of these things were just pondered in in, in Mary's mind. What a deep, deep impact the birth of Jesus had on her. So which of these two responses describes you tonight? Are you going to walk out the door as if the birth of Jesus has no significance in your life? No significance? 
hasn't changed you, hasn't brought you to your knees, hasn't brought you to that point in your life where you realize that he is your only hope. I pray not. I pray that you will not leave that way. Are you going to treasure this message? Are you going to ponder in your heart all that Jesus has done for you? Why he came to this world to pay the price for your sins and to offer you life and salvation and joy and peace. Many who lived at the time that Luke wrote the words of this text were looking for a Savior. But they were looking in the wrong place for their salvation. There's an inscription from the time that Luke wrote this book, which called Caesar Augustus not just Savior, but Savior of the whole world. What a hopeless Savior. Putting your trust in a man like Caesar Augustus, a sinful human being, Savior of the whole world. And perhaps this is one of the reasons why Luke mentions him in his account. Here's what one author says, The Holy Spirit included this story in the Holy Scriptures so we would not miss the point. The real Savior of the world was not Caesar Augustus, nor will it be any great world leader. The Savior of the world is Jesus. I hope you're not putting your trust in any leader of the world. I hope you're not putting your trust in the president of our country or anybody else. Your hope, your only hope is in Jesus. So I need to ask you tonight, do you know the real Savior, Jesus? Do you have a living relationship with him? One day, every knee is going to bow before Jesus, including yours. And if you have been ignoring him, I must warn you that when Jesus comes again, you will not be able to ignore him any longer. Why not come to Jesus tonight? He will forgive you of your sin. He will save you. And from your heart with joy, you can sing glory to God in the highest. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for who you are for all that you have done. You are the only hope of the world. You are our only hope. And Lord, I pray that we, as we have gathered here tonight, I pray that in some way we've seen your glory. We've seen your grace and mercy offered to us in that perfect Lamb that good shepherd who laid down his life for the sheep. Lord, draw us to yourself tonight, and may you receive all the praise and the honor and the glory. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pine.
beginning till he appeared and the soul felt its worth a thrill of hope the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn fall on your knees oh hear the angel voices oh night divine oh night when christ was born Oh, night divine, oh, night, oh, night divine. Led by the light of faith serenely beaming with glowing hearts by his cradle we stand so led by light of a star sweetly beaming here came the wise men from the orient land the King of Kings lay thus in lowly manger in all our trials, born to be our friend. He knows our need to our weakness, no stranger. Behold your King before the lowly band. Behold your King, your King before him bend. Truly he taught us to love one another. His law is love and his gospel is peace. Chains shall he break for the slave is our brother and in his name all oppression shall cease sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise we let all within us praise his holy name christ is the lord then never ever praise we his power and glory evermore proclaim his power and glory ever more proclaim
continue to worship together tonight. Presence here tonight, your goodness, your mercy. Thank you for Jesus, our Savior, our Lord, the one who has come to forgive us and cleanse us. And Lord, enable us, like those shepherds, to make this known to those around us that many more may come to a living relationship with you. Lord, work in us and through us, and may you receive all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name we ask, amen. I invite you, if you aren't standing, stand together as we close with Go Tell It on the Mountain. Christ is born while shepherds kept their watching or silent flocks by night. Behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. Go tell it on the mountain. Christ is born. The shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed our Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and i 
Christ is born. Down in a lonely manger, the humble Christ was born, and God sent us salvation that blessed Christmas morn. Oh, tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Have a Merry Christmas.